I'm Sean Paul Cortens. Uh, we're at Roxbury Farm in Kinderhook, New York. It's a 250-acre farm. Uh, we've been here since 2000, and we bought it from a potato farmer. I'm Jody Beloit, and each season we have 40 acres in vegetables and 40 acres in cover crops, different grasses and legumes, so that we can have a good rotation. We grow for our 1,000 member CSA, and we deliver from New York City all the way up to Albany. And each season we grow a wide variety of vegetables. We also include some strawberries and some herbs. Well, our goal here is um, soy health, and soy health to produce um, healthy cash crops. In order to do that, we need to till the soil. Uh, we uh, cannot do no-till because it's too cold where we are. Uh, we need to expose the soil. And in the process, we're aerating the soil. Uh, we incorporate our cover crop for nutrients and we create a seed bed. Because we're an organic farm, we have to get most of our nutrients from our cover crops and our compost. So before we till for our vegetable crops, we'll either mow some of our cover crops that are really lush, like sweet clover, red clover, or hairy vetch, and then we'll spread 20 yards of compost to the acre. For winter killed oats and peas, we don't need to mow, so we just spread the compost and then we'll spade that in. In our rotation, uh, we're growing two years of cover crops that is followed by two years of cash crops. In order to prepare land for our cash crops, we're using a spader. And we chose a spader because it uh, minimizes passes and we are able to incorporate a uh, full standing uh, cover crop uh, almost immediately before we plant our cash crops, therefore minimizing inputs uh, from other sources. Okay, so this is the spader. Um, it consists of two components. In the front, there are the spades themselves that are mounted on a rotating axle. And they move around in relatively slow speed and grab big chunks of soil and uh, invert that uh, deeper down. Then it's followed by the power harrow, which is also relatively slow moving. And these tines here, uh, they push the larger chunks of soil deeper into the soil. Along with that, the debris, the plant debris in the soil. So what happens here by moving that further, pushing that further into the soil, it um, will be able to uh, decompose. Then when we come back a week later, um, we are not dealing with the dried up uh, plant debris that can clog up our cedars. So the action of the spades is actually very slow compared to, say, a rotavator. A rotavator moves at high speed and it would uh, destroy the aggregation of the soil. What it does, it, it leaves the soil in very large clumps. This is like one clump where you can see that not a lot of damage has been done uh, to um, the, the natural uh, structure of the soil. So the whole idea is, is that we want to have an inversion, we want to incorporate, but we don't want to destroy the aggregation. And this is possible with the action of the spader. Uh, this field was uh, spaded a week ago. The hairy vets was worked in. And the hairy vets has been starting to uh, uh, break down. And uh, when it is broken down, which can take anywhere between one week to two weeks, uh, depending on the, the warrant of the soil, uh, we start making beds. Sustainable tillage practices that promote soil health are critically important to the long-term viability of farming. This poses a challenge for many commercial vegetable farms in the Northeast, where a lot of tillage is used to prepare seed beds, control weeds, and incorporate residues. This video explores a variety of tools and techniques that growers and researchers are using to reduce the intensity of tillage while maintaining crop production. Farmers can decide for themselves what practices best fit their operation.